So previously we've kind of always talked about power rules or exponent rules and now we're going to be using the word indices as well. And I wanted to take a minute to kind of just clarify that powers, indices, and exponents they're really all the same thing. So same stuff. Just different words to describe them. And literally the most important part of that is what we're meaning is that part. You have your base and then you have what you can call your power, your indice, or your exponent. So what we might be familiar with calling a power, we can also call an index or indice for plural. It is just index if you're talking about one of them. But it's kind of all the same thing. And we're going to start looking at negative indices, often referred to as indices when we start talking about them as negative or negative powers. But uh, let's just remind ourselves how this stuff works out. So if we look at this pattern, 2 to the power 5 is 32, 2 to the power 4 is 16, 2 to the power 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. How are we getting between one and another of these? So another way to look at this is what happened here. I divided by 2, right? And then to get down one more step, I still divide by 2, I still divide by 2, so following that pattern, dividing by 2, 4 divided by 2 gets me 2, and that makes sense. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. And let's keep going. Divide by 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, that's interesting. Some people might be surprised to find out that the power of 2 to the 0 is not actually 0, but it is 1. It is a single power there. Er, sorry, it is a single like digit there. It is just 1, not 0. And we can see that that happens because of this pattern that we're forming of just dividing or timesing if we were going to go upwards. So thinking about that, we could go up also by going times by two, times by two. So we're talking about timesing or dividing by twos. That makes the difference between one two with a power or an index and the one after that. So if two to the power of zero is one, let's keep going with our logic here. What happens if we divide by two? Well, one divided by two is a half. Okay, well that's interesting. We know that 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and here we see it on the bottom. Let's try this again. 1 half divided by 2. Well, if we have 1 half and we divide it by 2, what do we get? We get a quarter. And if we divide by 2 again, we're going to get an eighth. And if we divide by 2 again, half of an eighth is a sixteenth. So you can see here, we see these numbers kind of being familiar to each other. We've got a 16 for 2 to the power of 4, and we've kind of got the opposite of that down here. 2 to the power of negative 4 is 1 over 16. And these can be called reciprocals of each other. So 16 and 1 over 16 are reciprocal because they're literally kind of like an inverse, a flip over of each other. And what we notice is that if you've got negative powers, it's kind of the same thing, but it turns it into a fraction, so 1 over 8. So for instance, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and 2 to the power of negative 3 is just 1 over 8. So that's how the negative powers work out. They end up turning them into fractions, but it's the same idea, dividing and timesing by the base. So rules to remember out of this are going to be that x to the power of 0 is always 1, not 0. So we're saying anything to the power of 0, it can be 5 billion to the power of 0, you get 1. 40 to the power of 0, you get 1. Negative x, y squared, all to the power of 0, you get 1. And another important thing for us here is that we see that the negative here, um, x to the power of a negative a is equal to 1 over x to that a. So for instance, x to the power of negative 2 is equal to the same thing as 1 over x to the power of positive 2. So if it's negative on top, it'll be positive on bottom. And if we want to take just one second here to look at this, maybe we'll look at that one. 2 to the power of 3 is just 8, and 2 to the power of negative 3 is equal to the same thing as 1 over 2 to the power of 3, or we can write that as 1 over 8. So we can see it's a negative on top, it becomes a positive power when you put it over 1, or put it under 1, and it becomes the fraction. And it's usually our preference to write um, indexes, or write the answers with a positive index, or a positive power if possible. 
So let's take a look at applying a few of these rules. So, first example here, 3 to the power of negative 2. Well, we know that since that's a negative 2, we can also write this as 1 over 3 to the power of the positive 2. Again, if it's a negative power on top, it'll be a positive power on the denominator. And then we know that 3 squared is just 1 over 9. So 3 squared is 9, we get 1 over 9 as our answer. Taking a look at a fraction problem here. Remind yourself real quick that if you had 4 to the power of 5 squared, you would square both the top and the bottom. That would become 16 over 25. So same principle here. Um, and interestingly, when we've got a fraction like this, the whole thing is going to flip upside down. So how we saw we had 3 to the power of negative 2 became 3 to the power of 2 on the bottom of the fraction. We can flip this whole thing upside down and write it with a positive power. So this becomes 5 over 4 to the power of 3. Because they're reciprocals of each other, I've flipped 4 down to the bottom and 5 up to the top, and now I can make it a positive power. And we can write that out as 5 to the power of 3 over 4 to the power of 3, and that becomes 125 over 64. And another way to look at that, if you'd want, is we could just put that power through. That's 4 to the negative 3 and 5 to the negative 3. Well, knowing that if it's a negative power, I can move it to the top. I can move it to the opposite location. So if it's on top, I'll move it down, and it'll become positive. And if it's on bottom, same idea, I can move it up, and it will become positive. So there we go. We can even add, then, to our rule here, if you want to think about that as another example, that 1 over x to the negative a can be equal to x to the positive a on top. Again, if it's negative on bottom, it'll be positive on top. So let's see if we can apply that again to these next problems. So a to the power of negative y, we see a negative power on top. It's a numerator here, so we can just write that as a positive power on the bottom. So 1 over a to the y. Looking at another big fraction here, this idea, we have a negative power, that's going to allow me to flip the fraction if I want to, and write it with a positive. So I know I can flip this upside down, it's going to be y over x, all to the power of 5, and I can write that as y to the 5 over x to the 5 if I like. And maybe we'll add that to our rules here as well. So if you have x over y to a negative power, that becomes y over x the positive power. So you flip fraction and index or power becomes positive. Looking again with that idea of the fractions, here we see m over p to the power of negative x. Well, it's a negative power and it's a fraction, so in this case we can flip that upside down, p over m. The index becomes positive, it just becomes x, and we can write that as p to the x over m to the x. One last example here, sort of almost a blast to the past. You guys would have looked at the ones like this before, but just to kind of illustrate that now that we've talked a little bit more about negative powers, a couple of ways that you guys solve this is sometimes with the subtraction, Doing the subtraction of the power, so 3 minus 10 gives you a to the negative 7. Well, we also know that that is equal to 1 over a to the 7. And some of you guys may have solved that problem originally by having that visualization. If I did enough. Um, of 3 a's on top and 10 a's on bottom and canceling. And seeing that you've got 7 a's left and it is on the bottom. So, just another illustration again of how you may have seen negative powers before, but how they apply in these particular situations, or how we can look at these rules and apply them to the situations as well. So remember with a fraction, you can flip it upside down and make the power positive. With an individual on the top, like x to the power of negative a, you can flip it onto the bottom of, put a 1 over the top, put it on the bottom and make it a positive. And same idea if you have a negative on the bottom, underneath a 1, you can put it to the top with a positive power. So a negative power basically just indicates that you can put it into the other location. If it's on top of a fraction, it becomes positive on the bottom. 
it's on the bottom of the fraction, it becomes positive on the top.